So, Ali, <laughs> tell me why you're here in Belfast. Nice. Good question. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like everybody has been asking me this. Like, I was telling a few people I was coming here this week, and everybody was like, why Belfast? And I was like, why not? Um, I mean, I think Ireland in general, and Belfast in particular, has an incredible density of talent. Like, if you look at the overall Irish population versus the tech talent that is here, I think it's insane. Um, and I think this is a, actually like a privileged position for an investor um, to be able to come to a city and be able to meet literally like everybody. Um, I think it's, uh, it's quite unseen. Um, and yeah, I think uh, you look, the talent is amazing. People are ultra nice, um, which is quite a shock coming from Berlin. <laughs> I think it, it's not about German, it's about Berlin people <laughs> who are definitely a very specific type. Uh, and I think Irish people are, are, are super nice. Plus they have the talent on top, technical talent. So I think it's a great combination for me. <laughs> Good. I love it. So you are an investor, as you said. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the fund that you sure. work for? Sure. Um, so Cavalry, um, so maybe let's start with the name. <laughs> yeah. Let's address the elephant in the room. Um, yeah, the name comes from the idea uh, that the fund was uh, initially founded by a network of entrepreneurs, business angels, former entrepreneurs, the likes of Delivery Heroes, Signavio, Adian, etc., etc., um, and uh, all this platform of people. At the beginning, I think there were 100 of them. Now we are above 150. Um, wanted to be more active in the startup ecosystem and actually give back. Um, and uh, it's a bit cheesy, but kind of like uh, create the fund that wasn't there for them when mm -hmm. they started their journey. Uh, so that's the idea of the recovery. Uh, and we kept this in our DNA up until today. Uh, we are currently deploying out of our fund tree, uh, which is a bigger vehicle. Uh, we also have some institutional capital in, uh, which is amazing. But in terms of numbers of investors, the great majority is really like this individual entrepreneurial profile. Um, and we try to make use of the as entrepreneurial profile by connecting uh, these amazing people to our portfolio companies. Um, and I think that also relates to the stage we invest in. So we're laser, laser focused on precedency, tickets from 500k to 4 million for 10 to 15 percent ownership. I always have to give out the economic science, but cannot forget about that. Um, so lead or co-lead position. Um, and Obviously, this idea of connecting entrepreneurs to new entrepreneurs uh, comes very handy at this stage of the company because one, you have limited resources and two, most importantly, you're probably growing through this journey for the first time or even if it's your second time, we all know this environment changes so quickly, you're always going to need a sparring partner. Um, so this is really what we want to be for, for entrepreneurs and that's also why we keep a very concentrated portfolio approach, like 10 to 12 maximum investments per year and we try to be very active in each of them. I guess Ryan will testify if this is true or not. <laughs> it's better to ask him than to ask me. Um, but this is really the, the DNA of, of the recovery. In order to make this whole possible, it's not just an investment team, but also a platform and operations team. Um, and it's divided into streams. On the one hand, it's these people making the connections. And when I say making the connections, it's the entrepreneur coming to us uh, and telling us what they need. Uh, so they might need interest to design partners, sales clients. They might need sparring sessions with CTOs in a specific industries, whatever. Help with their GTM strategy, which is a classic. Um, also because we invest in very technical type of founders. Um, so all, all these types of, uh, of, of topics that, that come up a lot and we try to connect it to the most relevant people. And then there is a side of the operations team that it's really people with uh, specific horizontal knowledge. So they're either uh, experts in PR, HR, legal and finance, and they provide strategic support to our portfolio companies in those areas. Uh, and they try to obviously answer questions like, uh, for instance, uh, I don't know, you, you're building a hiring pipeline for the first time. Uh, so how do we actually, how do I actually do that? Or like PR does a little bit of everything because unless you're in a specific space within B2C, I guess you don't need a PR person at the pre-seed seed stage. Uh, so Lena is definitely getting her hands very dirty in that regard. <laughs> She's very busy. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty much how we try to support. And then the investment team is always there as a sparring. Um, 
classic support with the fundraising, but I think this is stable stakes in venture, right? Mm -hmm. It's like uh, providing uh, a benefits platform for, for entrepreneurs with AWS discounts. This is stable stakes. <laughs> um, so we try to go above that. And I think, I mean, personally as well, uh, coming like I joined the firm in June 2021. Uh, I, it, it's very, very clear that priorities portfolio companies and everything else comes afterwards, mm -hmm. even new deals, mm -hmm. right? Like portfolio companies are really at the core of, of the whole firm. Love it. Okay, let's talk about you personally now. So what cool. do you like to see? What are the kind of things that you like to kind of um, experience when you're chatting to new founders? Like what are those some things, if someone is going to watch this and maybe reach out to you, what are those some things that you want to see? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I think uh, obviously, uh, I mean, I have to say this, right? Because sometimes... I, I like it, it depends right but um i think obviously like we look for founders who are highly motivated to build a global company uh from the get-go obviously you test in your market first uh, i think island in that regard is great mm. because you have a small geography to start with you can kind of like mess up <laughs> uh, and then like uh it, i don't think it's gonna hurt you in the long term so i think it's uh it, for consumer products, for instance, is a great geography to start mm. with. Um, but obviously you need to have that hitch to, to build a global company that goes beyond the fact that, I don't know, you wanna make money fast uh, because this is not definitely the easiest way to go then. Um, so this is obviously very important, but it's, uh, it's, it's kind of like out there for, for every single VC. Um, I think for me, it's uh, definitely uh, people who have this itch, people who have kind of like a generative mind, who thinks differently. And uh, I have to say like experience on the specific space they're, uh, they're operating in is definitely a cherry on top. But I don't think it's always needed, especially from some, for some spaces that are quite crowded having someone from the outside might, might actually help in bringing in a fresh perspective. Um, but uh, yeah, so it, 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 like I think the perfect founder profile varies also according of the industry that they operate in. Um, but yeah, that's, I, I guess, my take. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. And you've met a lot of founders yeah. today that are fundraising, going out to market. What would be one of those little tips or hidden tricks yeah. that you would give them that are going out to market right now in that pre-seed or straight seed level? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think uh, definitely uh, one thing is uh, there's a lot of things to consider. Let's pick um, one. Let's pick yeah, one. Let, one, let, one let's, let's, exactly. Let's pick one. Let me think. Um, I think it's definitely what, what shocks most people, I think, approaching this for the first time mm. uh, is the... the, the questions um i think what's very important is obviously like nobody expects you to know everything from the start uh but you're still asking for a relevant sum of money um and money is a scarce resource um so you need to 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 have a game plan a clear game plan um so it's not enough to say obviously like i'm gonna sell the product and then i'm gonna figure out what happens next. Mm. Um, I think you really have to like study uh, the space that you're operating in inside out and understanding you have to know what you know and know what you don't know and have different plans for every situation. So I think it's a very tiring thought process, but it's something that I would highly advise to do mm. prior to our fundraising because people are going to ask you questions about what is the company look, gonna look like in seven years? Yeah. And likely this question will never be correct, right? <laughs> like if we look like back seven years ago, like companies that have answered this question, it will never be exactly how they, as they pictured it. Um, but this is what you're selling. Um, because I don't invest in a company for the next one year or so, I invest in a company for the next seven to 10. Mm -hmm. um, so I think this is something that you need to really think over um, and, but don't oversell, right? It's not like you have to sell a vision that you absolutely don't believe in, but you definitely need to say, okay, like if this, this, and this goes the way I think, then we can be that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think this is quite important. Uh, um, and there definitely needs to be a meeting point between the investor and the entrepreneur in that regard. I think we know where the entrepreneur comes from. We know why he cannot know certain things. Mm -hmm. 
um, but we also need to uh, understand what we're getting into. I agree. Game plans are key, but sometimes chaos does work as well. Yeah, yeah, it does, yeah. It does. It's, most of the time it's chaos. Sometimes. It is. <laughs> um, and uh, finally, so if a founder is wanting to reach out to yourself, how yeah. is the best way to do that? Not LinkedIn. Not LinkedIn. Okay. <laughs> What's the best way? What's the best way? Um, the difficulty of communication channels. <laughs> If I'm messy with my WhatsApp, I, I don't even want to describe how messy I am with my LinkedIn. Uh, also, I found out I pronounced this in a very Italian way, so sorry. Okay. Yeah. I think like you say it differently, but whatever. That's fine. Uh, I cannot change it now. It's been, I'm, I'm too old, I think. <laughs> uh, it's, it's stuck in my head. Um, no, but uh, I think email is the best way. Alessandra at Cavalry.vc. And now I gave it away also for the other colleagues of mine. <laughs> because, as you can imagine, there you go. That's, a trick. Have their first that's the trick. <laughs> that's the wee trick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, uh, that's definitely the best way to reach out. I think be very clear in your communication why we should jump on a first call, where you're at in the process, how much you're raising, what are you building with the platform, what is your traction, if any, et cetera, et cetera. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, Ali. Thanks. You're welcome anytime, and uh, hopefully we will see you back soon again. Yes, you're not getting rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.